What is up, Nerf Nation? I'm Naptown Nerf, and today we are comparing the two best Nerf blasters you can buy right now. All right, you guys, so obviously I've done full in-depth reviews on both of these blasters, the CETA Model S and the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1 and both are awesome Nerf blasters, and I'm really excited to talk about them today and to see what you guys have to think about them in the comment section below. So I can't wait to start the conversation, comparing these, talking about their strengths and weaknesses. But first off, I just wanna say that these two blasters are the best blasters that have ever come out in the Nerf hobby, in my opinion especially if you're interested in competitive Nerf play. So that's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the similarities of both of these blasters. Obviously they come out of the box, ready to go for competitive play, shooting upwards of 150 or more FPS right out of the box. And that is the best FPS that we have ever seen out of a stock Nerf blaster, quote unquote. So that is, awesome and that is why we are comparing these today these are definitely the most powerful most accurate nerf blasters you've ever been able to purchase right out of the box and i think that's absolutely awesome and i'm glad that both of these are here for our hobby for a hobbyist and for people that are trying to get into the hobby and want to be competitive at their local nerf battle so i think that's super awesome obviously they're both Based off of the Retaliator design, they are both pump action blasters that have more or less full seal breech systems inside. They both shoot half link darts that are more accurate than your normal full link dart. And I think that's super cool and what makes these so, so awesome. And something that obviously the hobby has been using for a very long time, but is something brand new to a blaster you can buy. Both have very sturdy metal priming bars. The Dart Zone Pros may be a little bit stronger than the CETA, but they both have very nice metal priming bars. They both have M4 style stocks that are compatible with your normal Airsoft or Real Steel M4 stock. They're very adjustable, so they can fit up to pretty much any size person. So I think that's really awesome. Have lots of adjustment points there. They both have full Picatinny rail on top here that you can put any sort of scope or iron sight that's compatible with Picatinny on there. So that's awesome. They both have metal barrels, as you can see here. Uh, one is definitely a little longer than the other. The tightness of the CETA is a bit tighter than the Dart Zone Pro barrel, but I'll get into more of that a little bit later. The Dart Zone Pro also comes with a plastic barrel that kind of lowers the FPS, which is could be nice if the 170, 180 FPS this thing shoots stock is a little too high for your local Nerf War. This plastic barrel could be a little bit better option. Also, both blasters have a two pin breakdown design that allow your blasters to come in two. They both do this for different reasons. The Dart Zone Pro does this to basically allow them to ship the blaster in half to make it cheaper for them to ship the blaster. There's not a huge purpose, to be honest, for the pins here. Uh, so that's a little weird to me that they chose that design, but you can break your blaster in half if you so choose. The CETA, on the other hand, breaks in half and actually allows you to access the internals that makes it really easy to lubricate, modify, change out springs, and do pretty much anything you could possibly wanna do to this blaster internally and makes this blaster a much better option when it comes to wanting to do any sort of internal modifications. But there's obviously more to be said about that in a minute, but this blaster is pretty cool in how it comes apart and allows you to access the internals. And I think that's pretty sweet. Obviously some differences are the design of the pump grip. This one comes with an angled foregrip that is actually removable and there is a small piece of Picatinny rail down there. So you could change this out and put any sort of airsoft or real steel foregrip on there. So you can customize it to the foregrip you want. The CETA obviously has more of a pump action design that is 
okay in stock form, but if you do upgrade this to a beefier spring, you're probably gonna wanna change out this foregrip, but there are 3D printed options to do so. Lots of people make them. I've recently put a new grip on my modified CETA, or at least this one. The one behind me also has a different type of foregrip that is available. This one is from Foam Technician that is very co comfortable and really allows you to beef up that spring. And this one is available on Thingiverse from Jet Blasters who designed this blaster and is free for download. If you have your own 3D printer, you can print that out yourself and change that out pretty easily. So I think that's pretty cool that there is a lot of other options, obviously, that you can purchase and change this too if you so choose. Also, the Dart Zone Pro is the only blaster that will shoot full length darts, which is a pretty nice plus to this if you do like shooting full length darts. Honestly, I think people that get their hands on this will realize that half lengths are the way to go. But if you have a game that you go to where you're not allowed or they don't have half lengths for you to use, full lengths may be the option. Although there are very few types of full length darts that will actually work out of this blaster. So you kind of have to keep that in mind. Both of these blasters really do not work well with darts like your AccuStrike darts, your AccuFake darts, or your Wafflehead darts that are very commonly used at Nerf Wars, especially, and they're very good out of flywheel blasters, uh, but they're not good out of full seal breech systems. And that goes for really any type of full seal breech system. That being said, this blaster, like I've said in my reviews, really works the best with the Dart Zone Pro darts which is probably the biggest plus, and we'll go ahead and talk about the pros of the Dart Zone Pro. The darts are amazing. They are probably the best dart that has ever been made or designed for the community, and I think they're really cool. I hope that they come more available. I know that Dart Zone has said they are gonna make them more available, and they are just a really cool design. That being said, they have really made this perform much better with their darts than with other darts, so keep that in mind. But let's go ahead and talk about more of the pros of the Dart Zone Pro. The grip is just the best grip that I've ever felt on a Nerf Blaster. It is very, very nice, and I mean, you have to really feel it to understand what I'm talking about, but this rubberized part that they have added to the plastic makes it very comfortable. I really like the notches in front. It fits your fingers perfectly. It is a very nice size and very quality. The trigger pull is very nice as well. They have a very beefy metal catch in this blaster that is very sturdy and very high quality. The whole blaster is a little bit higher quality uh, than the CETA, so it's just a more sturdy, uh, just a nicer, more refined design in my opinion, but that definitely comes at a cost. I'll go ahead and tell you what the cost of each blasters are, at least retail. This is $150 and is available at target.com. The CETA Model S is retails for about $89, although I got my blue one for $65 on sale, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, and that was from evite.com here in the US. They are obviously, the CETA is obviously available from other retailers along with Jet Blasters throughout the world, but the Dart Zone Pro is only available in the US unless you get somebody to ship it to you. So that's kind of a downside. We'll go ahead and mention that uh, for the Dart Zone Pro that it is really only available here in the US. So like I was saying, this has really nice metal priming bars. They are very thick stronger than the CETA's priming bars, so they could probably handle more of a spring load, although I think they're both adequate uh, to the spring loads that honestly are practical for both blasters. Nevertheless, that is very nice. I also love the fact that they have made these internal on this blaster. I think that looks a lot nicer and gives it a nicer quality, uh, a nicer look, um, and I really think it's cool that you can see through to that blue uh, the priming bars there, so that's really, really cool. So I've already talked about the fact that you can change out the foregrip to any other sort of Picatinny foregrip, and I think that's a huge plus for this blaster also. And honestly, I just love the way of the, the front of this blaster looks. I think design-wise, they nailed it with the front look of the blaster, and I do prefer it 
slightly over the Sita in terms of looks. Although, since I'm talking about it, the Sita I think looks better in the back half of the blaster. Uh, so it'd be really nice if I could put the two together, but unfortunately you can't. Uh, but nevertheless, both have attractive qualities and I think they're both really good looking blasters. Another pro I would guess is the dart stop that comes in the Dart Zone Pro that keeps darts from popping up out of your magazine. I think that's a really cool new design that they've put in there that I've never seen in a Nerf Blaster before. The Dart Zone Pro comes with a few more things in the box than the CETA does. You do get some plastic iron sights, although they are not the best, highest quality iron sights, but they are something and they do work as iron sights. So that's a nice touch. You can remove them very easily. So that's really cool. It also comes with a proprietary half-length magazine with the adapter and a full-length mag that you can use. This is compatible though with all your Nerf or aftermarket magazines, including Talon magazines, Talon adapters, Katana magazines, Katana adapters, and every 3D printed adapter that works with both of those types of magazines that I own. So that's really cool that you can use those things with this blaster. Although these magazines are not compatible with the CETA or other Nerf blasters, mainly because they've added a ridge right here. So you probably could modify it to make them compatible, but they're just in stock form, not backwards compatible. One other thing that's a nice feature, in my opinion, about this blaster is the screws that screw the priming bar into the bolt sled actually screw into the bolt sled which is really nice. They also have a small O-ring on here that kind of keep the rattle to a minimum and uh, don't scratch up your priming bar. So I think that's a nice touch. Just a little bit higher quality uh, the way that works there than it does with the CETA. I'll go over how that works when I talk about it. But yeah, that's really, really cool. So let's go ahead and talk about the pros of the CETA Model S. So like I said, the CETA Model S comes in at a price point of $89, but like I said, I picked this up for $65 on evag.com. So the price point of this blaster is basically half of the Dart Zone Pro or in that range, depending on obviously how much you pay for it. So I think that's awesome. I'm not sure if the Dart Zone Pro will have sales on target. I think it's a possibility, but I don't believe you'll find that in stores and finding sales online at Target is definitely not as common as finding them in store. Nevertheless, uh, this is definitely a more affordable blaster and that could be very enticing. This blaster, if you're gonna mod one of the two blasters, this is the blaster to go with. If you like to tinker with your blaster, the CETA is the one to go with. There is just so much more and it's just so much easier to get to the internals, to change them out, um, to do anything you possibly could think of internally to the blaster. The CETA is just far easier to work with. I've done a full mod guide for the Dart Zone Pro and explained exactly how difficult that is to get into. And I'll go over more of that when we get to the cons, but definitely uh, a video to look into if you want to do anything internally there. Another awesome thing about the CETA is it comes with a scar barrel or a rifled barrel that actually will put spin on your darts and make it a lot more accurate, which is awesome that it comes with that. You can sort of add one to the Dart Zone Pro. I was able to use the Worker Rifle Barrel, which is a very similar design to the one that comes in the CETA, uh, and put that inside of the muzzle for the Dart Zone Pro, and it does attach, but it probably doesn't quite go fully on, but it does work. So something to note, if you want to add a SCAR in stock form to your Dart Zone Pro, I think that's pretty cool that you can add that. But this one comes with it right out of the package. And I think that's really nice. It will hurt the FPS a little bit. And I think that's why this one shoots a little softer. One of the reasons why this shoots a little softer than the Dart Zone Pro right out of the box. Also, the effective barrel length of this blaster is quite a bit shorter than the Dart Zone Pro. As you can see there, that is the barrel. And then this one's actually lengthened even more because the breech is quite a bit longer. Now this barrel is looser than this barrel, as I was saying, but this part actually has a really tight fit on the dart. And the reason why a lot of darts don't like to work with this system, I think if this didn't have quite as tight a fit and had a better 
way of sealing together, it would work a little bit better. But nevertheless, this is the design you get and obviously has longer a longer barrel than the Cita. So let's talk about the Cita barrel real quick because the way they've designed this is what allows it to actually get a really nice full seal. They have added threads to each side. So this threads into the breech and if it doesn't have a full seal out of the box, a little added Teflon tape to the threads will really help out that seal and very easy to undo, add and put back together. Very simple, anyone can do that. So uh, I highly recommend you do that. If you do buy a Cita, it will help out with that seal. Another nice thing about the Cita Model S internals is the pusher actually has a little tooth that allows, that helps with feeding into the barrel. The Dart Zone Pro did this with the part that doesn't allow darts to pop out of the magazine. That kind of serves the same sort of purpose. So then it will help with feeding into the barrel. This has a nice tooth design that actually feeds darts in very nicely. Both have that O-ring at the end that obviously helps and creates that full seal between the pusher and the breech. One of the things I really like about the Cita is it has a very large jam door opening that actually allows you to get in there if you have some sort of issue. Um, I really don't have too many issues with either of these blasters in terms of jamming here that you could clear, so it's not a huge thing. The way the Dart Zone Pro is designed, you really cannot get in there at all. Uh, they do give you a little tool if you need to, but that isn't really practical for quick uh, you know, issues you may have in there during a game. So this is nice that it has that big opening if you do some, have some sort of issue if a dart is messed up and doesn't feed into the, into the breach. Uh, so I do think that that's a nice design. Also, a big plus to the Cita is it comes in both blue and red. So whichever color you desire, you can get. That's pretty cool. The Dart Zone Pro though only comes in red. I know it did come in orange in the collector's edition, but that is basically impossible to get now unless you buy it secondhand. So it really only comes in one color red. Also, one thing that I think was really nice is it made the pins fit perfectly to the blaster. You have a short pin for up here and a long pin down here. So they don't stick out more than they need to. They are very nicely designed to the blaster, unlike the Dark Zone Pro. So like I kind of stated earlier, I really do like the mag release feature on this for full length mags. Obviously this does not, with this internal system in it that it comes with with the C2S, it doesn't work with full length mags. So you will really hardly ever use this except for to change out your adapter maybe, which is nice because it's out of the way. It doesn't look bad. It kind of blends in really nicely with the blaster and it makes it really easy to still get to your mag release for the half link mag. And I really prefer this uh, mag release design for the shell compared to the Dart Zone Pro, which has that tooth design, which I don't find very attractive. And it kind of gets in the way of your mag release for your adapter to whatever adapter you use, unless maybe you're using the Talon adapter that doesn't have a mag release. Also the Cita, in my opinion, has a much, much more attractive back end, but that's just kind of preference, not a huge deal really. They both are very attractive blasters, but I just like the way this shapes better into the buffer tube stock. It doesn't have that flat back end, uh, just something to note. Uh, but like I said, I prefer the front end of the Dart Zone Pro, so it's kind of 50-50 there in terms of looks. So one of the other pros to the Cita is the fact that you can actually deprime the blaster because it doesn't have that floating plunger tube design that allows it to you know, fire full length darts. Uh, so that's really good because then you will not be dry firing your blaster nearly as much. And I highly recommend with both of these blasters to limit dry firing as much as possible. Both blasters are pretty well padded, especially the Dart Zone Pro. So they should be able to hold up uh, to dry firing, especially with the stock spring load. But if you increase that spring load, that's when you may get into trouble. Uh, so being able to deprime this blaster, I think is a very nice quality and I really like that a lot. Another awesome thing about the Cita is obviously it's available throughout the world, pretty much everywhere. You can, anybody that lives, you know, outside the United States should be able to buy this blaster. And there's a lot of aftermarket parts available for this. If you want to change anything out, if anything needs to be fixed or replaced, you could probably find something to be able to do that with this. Uh, you can actually buy the whole internal kit separately 
if you already own a CETA from back when they sold it with the Omni kit, which talking about the Omni kit, don't buy that version. Definitely buy the CETA Model S version. It's just hands down far superior. Nevertheless, you can source lots of different springs for it. So you can upgrade the spring to like a 12 kg or 16 kg. That being said, the Dart Zone Pro and the CETA work with a lot of retaliator parts. So that is something that's really cool about both of these. All right, so now let's talk about the cons of the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1. Obviously, the price is very high. I mean, $150 is not a cheap Nerf blaster at all. And considering the performance is very similar to the CETA, uh, especially if you're gonna use darts that are not the Dart Zone Pro darts, and I'll talk about that more in just a second, but the performance does get more similar using the sim a similar type of dart, and that blaster is just far cheaper, obviously, than this one. Like I said, this one is made with a little higher quality. So some may say you do get what you pay for. So that's just up to you to decide how much money you wanna spend, but this one does come in at quite a higher price point. So dart compatibility. Obviously this blaster has been designed to work far better with the Dart Zone Pro darts than with any other type of dart. Uh, this model seemed to work a little bit better than my first the orange one up there, the Mark I. But that being said, it still doesn't fire other types of darts consistently at consistent FPS. So if you're using this in a Nerf battle, that can get pretty annoying pretty quick, especially if they're not even firing out of the barrel. And it's mainly to do to the way they've designed the breech. Like I was saying earlier, it doesn't thread in. There's a lot of air loss there and it's just a very long, tight breech, and that causes problems for normal type of foam darts that have full fo foam design and not that bamboo design like the Dart Zone Pro darts. That being said, darts that have better glue seem to work better, like the most Worker Gen 3 darts. Even the darts that came with the CETA seem to work pretty well from the few that I tested. I don't have a ton of those. I would love to get more of those to test more. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you're gonna use this blaster in stock form, I highly recommend using it with the Dart Zone Pro darts, and that can get pricey as well. The darts aren't super expensive, but they are pricier than most other half-link dart options. Another huge negative or con for me for the Dart Zone Pro is being able to actually open this up and to fix or do any sort of modifications internally. Luckily, they've done a pretty good job of lubricating everything, so you get a well-lubricated blaster right out of the package. That's one thing that I will talk about in a second with the CETA, but being able to re-lubricate things after having this maybe for a year or so, you may wanna get in there and re-lubricate like the plunger tube, and if you haven't seen my mod guide for this, you'll understand that that is extremely difficult and it's very hard to even open this up without breaking stuff. So highly recommend keeping this together as much as possible. Changing out stuff in the front end is actually a little bit easier. That comes apart pretty easily. So if you wanna change out the breech and the barrel, the breech, I still think you have to remove the back end, but if you wanna like put some Teflon tape maybe to help seal that, connection a little bit better. It's still not gonna be 100%, but you can put some in there just to make the seal a little bit better. Um, and you can do that without too much issue. But other than that, you're gonna have problems with this. One thing that I didn't mention with the pros of this blaster is actually being able to change out the spring is very easy. Uh, I missed that one. Uh, but yeah, that is a nice thing. But that being said, I wouldn't recommend changing out the spring because when I added uh, a cut down CETA spring, a 12 kg cut down CETA spring, so maybe a little less than 12 kg, it actually put a lot of stress on the uh, housing for the catch and the plunger tube. And it actually left stress marks on there. And you can see this in my mod guide video. Um, so really wouldn't recommend upping the spring load of this because if that breaks, you're gonna be in trouble and the blaster will not work. The other downside is 
the fact that you cannot really source springs that work that are made at least for this blaster. Cedar springs cut down will work. Um, even actually full length Cedar springs will work, but you will have to modify the plunger rod and that requires opening up the whole blaster. And we just went into, that's not a good idea. So keep that in mind. It's gonna be hard to change out the spring to anything else. And even if you do, that catch may have some issues or the housing for the catch may have some issues uh, holding up. So those are some of the major, major cons to this blaster. And depending on how you like to use your blasters and how you like to tinker with your blasters could be a big factor in which blaster you wanna purchase. But the other thing that's annoying about this blaster is because it shoots full length darts, it will not allow you to deprime the blaster. The catch, like I said, in that housing that holds in the catch in the plunger tube, it moves backwards. So it's not in line with the trigger when you've primed the blaster. So that doesn't allow you to hold the grip forward or hold the grip and then move it forward to deprime the blaster because you cannot release the catch as it's past the point of where the trigger uh, release is. So that's something that's a little weird and really hard to get used to with this blaster. So you will dry fire this blaster quite a bit. And another reason why upping the spring load could be a bad idea because that's just a lot of pounding. Obviously you could feed in a dart and kind of, you know, but that just takes a lot of time and is not super practical. Uh, but there are ways you can not, uh, <laughs> you know, dry fire the blaster, but in battle, that's gonna be very difficult to do in my opinion. So another thing that I find very strange that they had, did not fix in the Mark 1.1 is giving you pins that actually fit the blaster. Like this sticks out so far and for a blaster that is of the quality of this blaster and the quality they're selling it as with the price point, you would think they would make pins that actually fit the blaster. And I think that's just very tacky and something that would be very easy to fix. But my guess is they just bought these from an aftermarket someone so they wouldn't have to design a pin specifically for the blaster and then they could buy the two of the exact same and it just lowers the cost of the blaster at least in manufacturing but it's a high quality product you'd think you'd want to coordinate those pins to the blaster another thing that i think a lot of people may find a little weird about this blaster again with that moving plunger tube the you do not engage the spring until the blaster gets to there and it has like a double clunk usually when you do it it's like a clunk clunk well it doesn't do it now but a lot of times it has like a little da dunk if you've used the blaster you understand that you can kind of feel it or see it there so that's really weird it's something that you kind of have to get used to so that's kind of personal preference on if that's a real you know problem or not a big problem but it is something that's strange and something i definitely wanted to talk about like i was saying earlier the mag release has this big tooth here which i think is pretty ugly honestly and just i don't like the way they've molded that and the way it looks to be honest and then it kind of does get in the way a little bit of your mag release and if you're only using half link darts this is something that you don't need and because the blaster is very difficult to get open it's going to be hard to change that out with any sort of 3d printed thing that's you know, more minimal or something like that. The way they want you to clear jams with this blaster is they have a tool like this that you can get in here with because it's very hard to get in there with your finger and be able to do anything. Maybe if you have really tiny fingers, but um, the way this jam door or opening is designed and then the way they have this part right here, it doesn't really allow you to get in there, but I haven't really had too many problems with jams, except for bar darts not leaving the barrel, and then you just kind of have to prime your blaster again and fire again. Um, so it's not a huge deal, but I think it's kind of strange that this is so small. I do think it's kind of cool that they've added that storage for that tool in the back of the stock, and they also have two O-rings for the pusher, so it's nice that they've added those things in along with this blaster. Um, nice touch there. But this blaster, if you want it in a different color, Sorry, you're gonna have to deal with red, at least for now. This is the only color that it's available in. It is a target.com exclusive. So if you live outside the US, you will not be able to purchase this unless somebody in the US ships it to you. So that's a little disappointing, 
Um, I don't know if that will change down the road, but for now, that is the way it is. So that really sucks about this blaster, in my opinion, and I really do feel bad for other people outside the US. That is most of the cons for the Dark Zone Pro. Take it or leave it, think about it. Those are definitely things that are downsides, uh, depending on your point of view of the blaster. Let me know what you think about those in the comments section. Let's move on to the CETA Model S and talk about the cons of that blaster. So some of the major cons of the CETA Model S, the fit and finish is just not as high a quality as the Dart Zone Pro. There is definitely more tolerance issues, uh, just more play in the blaster. Uh, the priming grip is a bit slick and just not super comfortable. You can't change it out easily for other attachments without like buying 3D printed parts to, re to replace this with. You basically do want to have your finger on there to be able to prime it, you know, effectively. And if you upgrade the spring, like I said, this is probably not going to be adequate. The stock that they send with you uh, with this blaster is very jiggly and loose. Um, it doesn't collapse. It is functional, but it's just not high quality. And the one that comes with the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1 is way nicer. But I have a feeling that most people, especially with this blaster and what I've done with the ones I've modified is I've changed this out for an M4 stock. So I think that was kind of the idea with the CETA is keep the price down, put a cheaper stock on there because most people are going to be changing it out anyways. One other con about this blaster is a lot of people complained about the plunger tube not having any lubricant at all in it when it was shipped to them. I noticed in mine that it had very little. It did have some, but it had very little. So I highly recommend if you do buy this to add some silicone grease to the plunger tube and to the O-ring there in the plunger uh, just to help with performance. That will help greatly, but it is super easy to do that at least in the CETA. So that's pretty awesome that you can get in there, pop it out, pop it back in, and you really have no issues uh, doing that, which really helps out with maintaining your blaster, which is really important, in my opinion, with blasters like this. You do want to be able to maintain them, and uh, the CETA is far easier to do that than the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1 or Mark 1.1. So hopefully they'll change that. I have a feeling if they get a lot of complaints about that, they may add a little more lubricant in there, but uh, definitely something to note. And then obviously the other big, not con, but difference of this from the Dart Zone Pro, like I said earlier, is this only does shoot half link darts with the kit that it comes with. They do make an Omni kit that's supposed to shoot full link darts, but it does not do so well at all. And I highly recommend not purchasing that. Uh, do not purchase that. It does not work well. It does not fire nearly as hard. If you want something to shoot full link darts, the Dart Zone Pro is the way to go no questions asked. But if you have not used half link darts before, I highly recommend trying them out first uh, because they're just so much better. They're way easier to load magazines. The magazines are cheaper. The magazines you can carry more on you at once. They're just way more effective way to um, battle and nerf, especially with a Springer, in my opinion. They're more accurate. They're just the way to go. So uh, I don't find that as a huge con to this blaster because I only really use half link darts now anyways, but if you have a place that only uses full links, I could see that being a bit of an issue. But honestly, that pretty much concludes the pros and cons and the differences uh, of the two blasters. Uh, hopefully this information was valuable to you. In conclusion, I honestly think both are great blasters. I like both of them quite a bit. I have multiple of each, obviously, uh, so um, obviously, I like both of them. I'm really glad that both companies decided to make ready to go out of the box blasters that you can take to a Nerf War uh, and use right away uh, with very little knowledge or no knowledge of modding or really the Nerf hobby at all. So I think this really opens up the possibilities to finding more people um, attending Nerf Wars uh, in your local area or your Nerf games, however you want to refer to them. And I think that it will keep people wanting to come back because I do know from experience running my own club that kids or adults even do get discouraged uh, when they don't have blasters that can perform up to that FPS cap that your Nerf club sets. So um, I think this is awesome. 
Uh, another thing to take note, if you're deciding between the two of these, uh, this one shoots right under 150 FPS. So think about the cap of the wars that you attend. Um, this one does in stock form shoot a little softer than the Dart Zone Pro, especially um, with half length darts, but both half length and full length shoot over 150. At least the Dart Zone Pro darts shoot over 150 FPS with that Dart Zone Pro in stock form. So you definitely want to think about the cap that your club offers, the type of games that you'll be going to and what you can actually use. The Dart Zone Pro does offer that plastic barrel that does uh, bring down the FPS, but it brings it down quite a bit and really um, hits way under 130. Um, you know, about 130 with, with the Dart Zone Pro half link darts, but way under that with any other type of dart, more like 100 FPS. So the, <laughs> the drop in performance is quite a bit with that plastic barrel. But it is nice that they include that probably for that exact reason. Um, it doesn't really help you shoot more types of darts though, so keep that in mind. Uh, at least for my testing, it really has had no impact on the types of darts that are effective. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. I'm glad I got to share all my opinions on both of these blasters and I uh, would love to hear yours in the comment section below. If you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. Ring the bell for notifications, and as always, peace out.